future of our most precious asset, the children of Central New York, and by PNC Foods, headquartered in Syracuse for over 50 years, operating 70 supermarkets in New York and Pennsylvania. PNC, your closest friend. Today's mission is fueled by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, viewers like you, the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television, and Delta Airlines. Because learning about geography is a great way for kids to learn about each other, no matter where they hang their hats. Delta Airlines, on top of the world. Last! Those Acme Time Pilots keep foiling my capers. I've become the laughing stock of the criminal mastermind community. But that's all about to change. Soon, history will be altered forever. Thanks to me. It's time to call Dr. Beljar. Oh, let me guess. A fiendish caper only you could kick come up with? Yes. I'm sending you through the time port to the United States in the year 1838. There's something very special I want you to steal. A special theft requires the special genius of Dr. Beljar. Of course it does. This info beam will give you all the details. Now, get going. Time pilot, Dr. Beljar just stole something from the past. You've got 28 minutes to get it back or history will change forever. Initiate chrono skimmer launch sequence. Boot up the chrono computer. Power up the engines. Extend the temporal sequencer. Now, get going! We're on the case and we're chasing her through history. Chrono skimmer, engines hot. Bio villains, evil plot. Our brain squadron leader will help us get beater and bring. I want you to hang on tight because we've got a very big mission, but very little time. So let's meet today's time pilot, starting with Ryan Foster. Welcome aboard, Ryan. Good to see you, pal. Looking good. And Peter Garofalo. Come in, Peter. Nice to have you in the squadron. And Alex Cassano. Alex, come on in there. Nice to have you in the mission. OK, time pilots. You've heard the mission from the chief. Now let's check in with the Chrono Skimmer engine crew. Are you ready, crew? Hello. Ready and raring to go. All right. They are moving and shaking. All right, pilots, we depend on fact fuel to power this chrono skimmer, and you'll be generating that power with your answers. All right, so each of you is equipped with 100 power points. So let's begin our pursuit of Dr. Beljar. Chief, what's our mission profile? Squadron, your time target is 1838. Destination? The United States. Until that time, people had tried many ways to communicate over long distances, including drums, smoke signals, and flags. But then, Samuel Morse perfected a far more efficient method. It uses electrical impulses to transmit signals along a wire. He also invented Morse code which translates these dot and dash signals into letters and numbers. Morse's device was the first telecommunication system, or so history told us till now, when Dr. Beljar zipped back in time and dashed off with a dot dash device. Thanks, Chief. Pilots, for 10 power points, what did Dr. Beljar steal? Was it the telephone? The telegraph or the telegram? All right, Ryan, what'd you say, pal? The telegraph. Said the telegraph. Peter? The telegraph. Also the telegraph. And Alex? 
I said the telegraph. The telegraph. Well, the correct answer is the telegraph. Very good, guys. Now we know what Dr. Beljar stole. We want to get it back. And I tell you, if one of you can retrieve the loot and capture Carmen Sandiego, you will win a complete multimedia computer system. All right? Pretty good. So let's go get it back. Engine room, let's warp to the time of the crime. <laughs> Well, pilots, we wanted to travel back to 1838, but that warp drained our fact fuel before we got there. Right now, we're stuck in the 1840s, so we've got to refuel with a data boost. All righty, guys. I'll name a historical event. It's up to you to buzz in and tell me whether it took place in the 1840s or the 1940s, all right? If you're right, you get five power points, and if you're wrong, you lose five power points. Here we go. Transistor first demonstrated. Yes, Ryan. 1840s? Actually, it's the 1940s, 1947. All right, women allowed to vote in Italy. Yes, Alex. 1940? Correct. 1946. Five points for you. World's first Christmas card sent. Yes, Ryan. 1940s. Actually, it's the 1840s. 1843. These things happen a lot earlier than we realize. The expression, OK, becomes popular. Yes, Ryan. 1940s. Actually, it's the 1840s. Jefferson Memorial is dedicated in Washington, D.C. 1840s or 1940s? Peter. 1840s. Actually, it's the 1940s, 1943s. These are very tough guys, but you did excellent. All right, pilots, you replenished our fact fuel, though. And just a reminder, all our fact fuel is verified by Encyclopedia Britannica. Now, let's continue on our mission and get back the telegraph. We've just got to find out where in time Dr. Beljar has taken the stolen telegraph. So if we can... O Wait a second. What's happening? Ah! Ah! Questions time, Tots? Then let the brilliant Beljar reach out and taunt you with the answer. I'm on a ship that's running a telegraph line from Ireland to Newfoundland. People have already tried to do this four times and failed! Fools! They never asked for my help! But this time, they're unreeling the cable from a huge modern steamship called the Great Eastern. It was the largest ship in the world when it was launched. Soon, people on two continents will be able to communicate by t t t t t t t t telegraph and tell each other what a genius I am. Ah! All right, pilots, tell me the place and time where Dr. Beljar is hiding. Is it the Pacific Ocean in 1771? The Atlantic Ocean in 1866, or the Indian Ocean in 1909. All right, Ryan, what'd you say, pal? Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean in 1866. Peter, buddy, what'd you say? Also Atlantic Ocean. Also Atlantic Ocean. And Alex? I said Atlantic Ocean. Too. You did? Well, the answer is Atlantic Ocean in 1866. That's what we like to see, guys. Pilots, it was the telegraph that first made electronic communication possible between two continents. But that amazing event will never happen if you don't get back that loot. So, let's warp to 1866. Catch me if you c can, time pilots. All right, hang on. Dr. Beljar has neutralized our fact fuel. It's time for another data boost. All right, time pilots. I'll name a U.S. president. Your job, buzz in and tell me whether he ever spoke on the telephone at any time in his life, all right? If you're right, you get five power points. If you're wrong, you lose five power points. Remember, did he ever speak on the telephone? Abraham Lincoln. Yes, Ryan. No. Correct. Lincoln was actually assassinated in 1865. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone in 1876. All right, how about James Garfield? Yes, Peter. Yes. Correct. The answer is yes. Believed to be the first president to use a phone in 1878 when he was still a congressman. All right, Harry Truman. Yes, Ryan. Yes. Yes, the answer is yes. He was president from 1945 to 1953. How about John Quincy Adams? Yes, Ryan. No. The answer is no. You are correct. Five points for you. He actually died in 1848. All right, finally, Lyndon B. Johnson. 
Ryan. Yes? The answer is yes. Very good. He was president from 1963 to 1969. Great job, Squadron. We've replenished our fact fuel, and we're ready for time travel. All right, so hang... Wait a minute, time pilots. Looks like the clue finder is detecting someone who may have some information that can help us. Let's see if you can give us a hand where Dr. Beljar is now. Oh, hi, how are you? Uh, hello? Oh, I forgot. I saved 10 cents if I use these. <clears throat> Uh, hello? What do you want? <laughs> uh, uh, I was just curious. Can you tell us what you're doing? I'm operating one of the first telephone exchanges. What do you think I'm doing? Yeesh. Well, well listen, I just have a few questions. Yeah, yeah, I... make it snappy. I'm listening in on Mark Twain on the other line. Well, uh, well, I just wanted to know... Shut what... up! Would you fellas quit making all that racket? I can barely hear what this yutz is jabbering. Hey, who did that? Mulligan, I'm gonna fix your clock. I guess I don't have to use that right ear. Those boy operators aren't very good in the manners department, are they? All right, you heard the clues. Now tell me, where in time is Dr. Beljar? Tell me the year, okay? Is it 1878, 1921, or 1930? Remember the clues we just heard? First telephone exchanges, boy operators were rude to customers, and Mark Twain was among first to get telephone. Ryan, what'd you say, pal? 1921. 1921. And Peter? I also said 1921. You all said 1921. How about you, Alex? I said 1930. Okay, the correct answer is 1878. In fact, those obnoxious boy operators were soon replaced by women, and the telephone was a great leap forward in communication. Instead of sending and receiving electronic code, voice communication over wires was now possible. But... We may all be using our phones for paperweights, unless you save history, pilots. Engine room, let's warp to 1878. Okay, pilots, we followed Dr. Beljar back to the year 1878, but he's a, he's a tricky guy, because I think he knows we're on to him. So he's about to do some globe hopping in the 1870s, all right? That means for us, it's time for global pursuit. Grab your controls, watch the globe on your screen, and buzz in when you think you know the answer. If you're right, you get five power points. If you're wrong, you lose five. Remember, we're in the 1870s. Here we go. Bell jars in the state where a weapons maker is marketing the first practical typewriters. Yes, Peter. New York. Correct, it is New York. Five points for you. He's dashed to the city where Alexander Graham Bell says the first words ever spoken over a telephone line. Yes, Ryan. Boston. Correct, it is Boston. It's five points. Now we jump to the state where the Berlitz Language School is being founded. Again, Ryan. Rhode Island. Rhode Island it is. Very good. Bell jars in the state where the world's first journalism course is being offered. Once again to Ryan. Missouri. Correct, Missouri. Now he's in the state where the first phonograph records sounds onto foiled wrapped cylinders. Yes, Ryan. Virginia. Actually, it's New Jersey. Excellent job, guys. All right, well time pilots. Dr. Beljar just skipped out of New Jersey just before we got there. We must be able to catch... Oh, busy day. The clue finder's locked on us in time turbulence. Let's see when. Hey, it's in the 1990s. And readings indicated someone who can help us, so let's beam him on board. Uh, excuse me, General. Soldier! I, I, I sent you an important message over the Internet. Y you did? Yes! Once the Internet was used only for important information. But then, last year, the World Wide Web had its public release, and now there's a new graphical browser called Mosaic. Oh, that's right. Mosaic software was introduced in 1993. It, it made it easy for people to, to click and point their way to information on the web. So what's wrong with that? I mean, I enjoy a little web surfing from time to time myself. Surfing? Uh, yes, sir. Soldier! What's now known as the Internet was established in the late 60s. It was developed to provide the Defense Department with a military communications network that could survive nuclear war. But now, I fear this mosaic software will soon have millions surfing the web. So, I've developed 
an alternative system for military communications. You have? Yes. What, what is it? Ah, from now on, all top secret communiques will be baked into these small, bland cookies. Cookies. Here. There are your orders. Thank you. Good luck. General Mayhem. Huh. It says, uh, don't forget to call over here, too. Don't forget to call your grandmother. It's her birthday. Well, that's right. It is her birthday. Wait a minute. How did he know? But for now, Violet, we know that Dr. Beljar is hiding in 1993. Tell me which major news event happened that year. Was it the Space Shuttle Challenger explosion, the World Trade Center bombing, or Bill Clinton elected president? Remember the clues we just heard? The year, 1993. Mosaic browser software for the World Wide Web introduced. The part of the internet called the World Wide Web has its public start the year before. All right. Ryan, what'd you say? The World Trade Center bombing. The World Trade Center bombing. And Peter, how about you? I said the Bill, Cl Bill Clinton elected president. Bill Clinton elected president. Alex Powell, what'd you say? I said the World Trade Center bombing. World Trade Center bombing. The correct answer is the World Trade Center bombing. All right, pilots, you've journeyed from the early dots and dashes sent over telegraph wire to a time when millions of people and computers around the world communicate electronically over the internet. But. Their monitor screens could go dark any minute if we don't get back that loot. All right, time pilots, we know where Beljar is, and now we've got to make one finally forward in time. To do that, we're going to need all the fact fuel you can generate, and that means an ultimate data boost. All right, pilots, in the ultimate data boost, each correct answer gets you 10 power points. But if you're wrong, you lose 10 power points, all right? I'll name a method or tool of communication. Buzz in and tell me whether it does or does not require electricity, okay? Here it goes. A fax machine. Yes, Alex. It requires electricity. Yes, it does require electricity. American Sign Language. Yes, Ryan. Doesn't require electricity. Does not. Correct. The fourth, uh, fourth most popular in the U.S., too. Esperanto. Yes, Ryan. Requires electricity. No, it does not. Esperanto is an artificial language devised in 1887. It's used, though, by more than 100,000 people today. All right. Carrier pigeon. Yes, Ryan. Doesn't require electricity. Does not. Correct. Ten points for you. How about email? Ryan? It requires electricity. It does. Yes, ten points for you. Braille. Ryan again. It doesn't require electricity. It does not require electricity. Correct. Smoke signals. Ryan again. It does does not. Doesn't require electricity. That's right, is what you said. Very good. And Tagalog. Peter. It doesn't require electricity. It does not. Correct. Tagalog is a language spoken in the Philippines. CB radio. Yes, Ryan. It does. Correct, it does. Very good. All right, Ryan, our judges have indicated that I have revealed an answer early to you, so we'll need to deduct 10 points from your score. Okay? But that doesn't change much, because at this point, we'll see how we're doing. Ryan has 185 power points, Peter, 135 power points, and Alex, 145 power points, which means, Ryan and Alex, you're moving on to the next phase of our mission. And Peter, you did an excellent job, pal. We couldn't have gotten this far without you, you know? And now the chief wants to say a few words to express our appreciation. You did some great navigating in pursuit of Dr. Beljar, but sometimes that bionic bozo has all the luck. To assist you on future missions, I'm awarding you our Acme Time Net Mission Pack. You'll get a Deluxe Britannica World Atlas, this official Carmen T-shirt, the Chrono Skimmer cap with you-know-who's picture in front, a wear in time watch, and finally, this Carmen San Diego CD-ROM library and board games. They're what top-notch time pilots pack for R&R breaks between missions. From the brats here at Acme Time Net Command, congratulations! Okay, squadron, we sent Peter back to Time Net Command while we stay on here and complete our mission. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. All right, Chief, we're ready. Time pilots, the history of communication is at stake. Get to cyberspace in the 1990s and email an SOS for that telegraph. Kevin, you're in command. Aye, aye, Chief. Time pilots, full speed ahead to the 1990s. Look, it's Beljar. He's holding a telegraph in a cyber sphere. Activate the loot tractor beam and bring it on board. 
You'll never catch the br 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 brilliant bell jar. Looks like Dr. Belljar has given us the slip again, time pilots, but we've gotten back the telegraph. Now to fix history of wired communication and complete this mission, we've got to return it to the year 1838. Our last warp really drained our fact fuel, though, so to conserve what's left, we'll make the trip back through history in eight jumps. Let's check in with the Chief to get our flight plan. Chief! Time pilots, you must navigate the chrono skimmer through eight events from the history of communication, starting at the most recent event and finishing at the least recent event. The time pilot who does that goes on to chase Carmen and Dr. Beljar along the trail of time. Here are the events on your flight plan. First telegraph communication across an ocean is established. Mobile phone service begins in the U.S. The 911 emergency number is introduced in the U.S. Samuel Morse perfects the telegraph. The first telephone directory is issued. Inventor Alexander Graham Bell is born. Transatlantic long-distance phone service begins. E.T. phones home in Spielberg's film, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. That's your briefing time, pilots. Good luck on your journey. All right, Ryan, you had the higher of the scores, so you get the choice of going first or second. Second. Go second. All right, Alex. I want you to navigate this chronoskimmer skimmer back through time from the most recent event to the least recent event. You can start by choosing the most recent event on the board. 911 emergency introduced. Okay, let's go back to Ryan. Ryan, same thing, navigate this ship from the most recent to the least recent. First mobile phone service. Okay, Alex, back to you. ET phones home. Correct, you've gotten us to 1982. 911 emergency introduced. Yes, you've plowed us, of course, to 1968. Can you pick the next most recent event? First mobile phone service. You've steered us to 1946. Can you get the next most recent event? Transatlantic phone service. Yes, you've gotten us to 1927. Can you steer the ship to the next most recent event? First telephone directory. Correct. That book was issued in New Haven, Connecticut. Can you get us the next most recent event? First telegraph across our ocean. Correct. You've steered the ship to 1866. We're almost home. Morris perfects telegraph. Oh. Getting very close. Ryan, back to you. Oh. E.T. phone home. Correct. 1982, you've navigated us to. Can you name the next most recent event? 911 emergency introduced. Yes, you've plowed a course to 1968. The next most recent event? First mobile phone service. Yes, you've steered us to 1946. Can you navigate this ship to, to the next most recent event? Transatlantic phone service. Correct. You've gotten us to 1927. Can you name the next most recent event? First telephone directory. Yes, you've steered this chrono skimmer to the year 1878. Can you name the next most recent event? First telegraph across ocean. Correct. You've gotten us to 1866. We're almost there. Can you get us to the next most recent event? Alexander Graham Bell was born. Yes, you've gotten us to 1847. Bell grew up and developed the first practical telephone. Can you get us to the next most recent event? Moore's perfect, perfect telegraph. Yes, you have saved history in 1838. You did a wonderful job. Excellent job. You have gotten the telegraph back to the year 1838. Repair time and save history. Excellent. We're going to move on to the next part in just a moment. You did a wonderful job, Alex. And right now, the Chief has a word about your next mission. A squadron's only as good as each of its members. And you've been an outstanding time pilot today. That's why I'm awarding you this terrific time net mission pack. And this cool, portable CD player. The stereo headphones will let you listen to top-secret mission profiles, and the rechargeable batteries will power you through any situation. You're a top-flight time pilot. Congratulations. All right, Ryan. Right now, Alex is piloting the chrono skimmer back to the present. But Carmen's on the move again, and you've got to chase her down. So it's time for us to exit the chrono skimmer and head for the trail of time. Chief, is that a go? I'm activating the transportal departure bay, Kevin. Get ready to leave the chrono skimmer. Here we go, Chief. track Carmen through six time portals by answering her questions. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Ready, set, go, Ryan, go. Follow the engine crew to the first portal. 
It's 2000 BC. Which animals do Sumerians use to send messages? Pigeons or hawks? Hawks. All right, pull the rope to open the gate, Ryan. Pull it hard. Go, pal, go. Pull, 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 pull. Keep going. It's moving, it's moving. Go, go, boy. Keep it up. Keep it up one more. All right. Move on to the section portal. It's 1860. From which state do the first Pony Express riders leave? California or Missouri? Missouri. All right, four more to go. You've got 52 seconds. Keep up the good work. It's 1876. From what city did Bell transmit the first words by telephone? Boston or Pittsburgh? Boston. Yes, you've captured Dr. Bell Jar. Congratulations. It's 1878. Which writer was one of the first to own a telephone? Mark Twain or F. Scott Fitzgerald? Mark Twain. Yes, Ryan. Two more to go. You've got 23 seconds left. It's 1933. Which communication tool is the Army developing? Shortwave radio or walkie-talkies? Shortwave radio. All right, crank the crank to open the gate. Go ahead, crank it. Keep going, keep going. Almost there, Ryan. Atta boy, keep it up, keep cranking, keep cranking. All right, one more to go. It's the year 1969. What? <laughs> oh, I ran out of time, Ryan. But you did capture Dr. Belljar, even though Carmen got away. That's a very tough thing to do, and you did it, pal. And right now, the Chief's got a few words for you. Chief! No time pilot ever worked harder than you did today. And in honor of your achievement, I'm issuing you a full 32-volume set of Encyclopedia Britannica. It's packed with articles, maps, and illustrations that will put all of history at your fingertips. Plus, you'll receive this stereo CD music system with radio and dual cassette recorder. Pilot, you're promoted to head navigator. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. Ryan, you had a tough mission, but you did a great job. You captured Dr. Belljar, and you returned the loot to its proper place in time. Excellent time, pilot. But now we've all got to go back to the present. And remember, at Acme TimeNet, history is our job. The future is yours. We're on the case, and we're chasing her through history. Throttle open, thrusters on, chrono skimmer. Gets us caught, pack extra socks, and we'll all beat the clock from the Stone Age to Middle Age to Space Age. Today's storytime books are Is Your Mama a Llama? by Deborah Guarino, illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. Storm Boy by Paul Owen Lewis. The Monkey and the Crocodile by Paul Galdon. It's Not My Turn to Look for Grandma by April Halpern Whalen. Illustrated by George Booth. And The Toll Bridge Troll by Patricia Ray Wolf. Illustrated by Kimberly.